Lesson 5.1 is composite functions. Composite functions are functions where the output of one function becomes the input of another function. So this is the notation that we use, this open circle. So this is read as f composed with g of x, or f of g of x. So what we do is we literally take g of x, we do the g of x function, and then whatever the output is of that, we're going to put that into f and do the f of x function. The domain of a composite function is the set of all x's that are in the domain of g, such that the outputs g of x are in the domain of f, which is a little bit hard to think about. Um, essentially, it's going to be the domain of the original function, plus once we do our composite, you're going to include the domain of what your final result is. So this is kind of a good visual of it. So you take your input x, you do whatever the g of x function is, and you get an output. Then you immediately take that function, or that output, and you put it into the f of x function, and you get your final output. So we are given f of x is 2x squared minus 3, and g of x is 4x. And so we want to find the following. So this first one says f composed with g of 1. Whenever I see this, I always rewrite this in the other form, so as f of g of 1, because it's kind of telling us more what we want to do. We always evaluate composite functions from the inside out. So the first part here is it telling us that we want to do g of 1. So I'm going to take g of x and I'm going to plug in 1. So I've evaluated g of 1 by plugging 1 in for x and g of x equals 4x. And so I get g of 1 is equal to 4. So now I'm going to replace g of 1 with its output 4, and I'm now going to evaluate my outside function, which is saying f of 4. So I plug in 4 into x for f of x, and I end up with 29. So f composed with g of 1, or f of g of 1, is 29. We can do something similar with a composite that just has variables as well. Um, where your final answer would also just have variables in it. So if I look at f, it says g of f of x. So if I want to do the inside, well, the inside just says the function f of x. So if I'm going to do just the function f of x, that's just what it originally tells me, which is 2x squared minus 3. So now I'm going to replace f of x with what it's equivalent to, which is 2x squared minus 3. So now I'm going to evaluate g of 2x squared minus 3, which means every time I see an x in g of x, I'm going to replace it with the entire thing 2x squared minus 3. So I have 4 times the quantity 2x squared minus 3, and so I end up with 8x squared minus 12. And so this whole thing is g of f of x. So now try the other ones, g of f of 1, f of f of negative 2, g of g of negative 1, and f of g of x. So for b, you have g composed with f of 1. So that's the same thing as g of f of 1. f of 1 is negative 1. And then I'm going to plug negative 1 into g, and I end up with negative 4. So g composed with f of 1 is negative 4. f composed with f of negative 2, that's the same thing as saying f of f of negative 2. So you do f of negative 2 and you end up with 5, and then you take 5 and you plug that into f again and you end up with 47. g composed with g of negative 1, so g of g negative 1, so g of negative 1 is negative 4, and then I replace that here and I did g again, and g of negative 4 is negative 16. So g composed with g of negative 1 is negative 16 f composed with g of x, so I'm going to take g of x, which is 4x, and I'm going to plug that into f of x. So every time I see an x in f of x, I'm going to replace it with 4x, and I end up with 32x squared minus 3. So that is the function g of f of g of x. So basically, that gives you a function that automatically does g first, and then does f afterwards, instead of having to do it in two steps. So now we have two rational functions, f of x equals 2x minus 1 over x minus 2, and g of x, which is x plus 4 over 2x minus 5, and we want to find the following and their domains. So first we want to compose f of g of x. So every time we see an x in f of x, we're going to replace it with the entire function g of x. 
So when we compose f composed with g of x, every time we see an x and f of x, we're going to replace it with the entire function x plus 4 over 2x minus 1, 5. So I have 2 times x, so I replace that with x plus 4 over 2x minus 5, minus 1 over x, so that's x plus 4 over 2x minus 5, minus 2. So now we have a complex rational expression. So similar to what we did last chapter, I'm going to simplify this using common denominators and such. So I made a common denominator, 2x minus 5. So then both the negative 1 and the negative 2 need it, which means they need a 2x minus 5 over a 2x minus 5. The 2 that's being multiplied is the same thing as 2 over 1. And similarly, these are the same thing as having a denominator of 1. So they just get multiplied through. So you if multiply all this through, you end up with 2x plus 8 minus 2x plus 5 over 2x minus 5 over x plus 4 minus 4x plus 10 over 2x minus 5. So if you combine like terms, you end up with 13 over 2x minus 5 over negative 3x plus 14 over 2x minus 5. So then I keep flip change because I'm dividing fractions, and the 2x minus 5s cancel, and you end up with 13 over negative 3x plus 14. In fact, whenever you're doing one like this and you end up with a, a fraction over a fraction where the denominators are the same, those denominators will always cancel. So now if we want to find the domain of this thing, we have to have two pieces. The first piece is because you're plugging it into the 2x minus 5 first, you have to take the domain of the inside function, so in this case the g of x function. So the domain of the inside function would be that x cannot equal 5 halves because 5 halves would make the denominator equal to 0. You also need to take the domain of the final function, so the 13 over the negative 3x plus 14. So the domain of that would be that x cannot be 14 over 3. And then we take the most restrictive combination of this. So in this case, because these are just two specific numbers that have been taken out, it's x cannot be either 5 halves or 14 over 3. And so that is the domain of this composite function. Try the other direction, g composed with f of x. So for this one, we're doing g composed with f of x, or g of f of x. So every time I see an x in g of x, I'm going to replace it with the entire function f of x, 2x minus 1 over x minus 2. So I have x, 2x minus 1 over x minus 2, plus 4, over 2x, 2x minus 1 over x minus 2, minus 5. So again, I made a common denominator. This time, my common denominator is going to be x minus 2. Um, and I combine my numerator, so I got 2x minus 1 plus x plus minus 4x minus 8 over x minus 2 over 4x minus 2 minus 5x plus 10 over x minus 2. So you end up with 6x minus 9 over x minus 2 over negative, 8 plus, negative x plus 8 over x minus 2. And the x minus 2s are going to cancel because if you keep flip change, one would be on the denominator and one would be on the numerator. So you end up with 6x minus 9 over negative x plus 8. So then, when I'm doing my domain, I care about the inside function, so in this case, f of x, so x cannot be 2, and my final function, so x cannot be 8. So my total domain is x cannot be 2 or 8. Suppose that f of x equals 3x minus 4 and g of x equals 1 third x plus 4. Show that f composed with g of x is equal to g composed with f of x, which is equal to x for every x in the domain. So do the composite in both directions and show it does, in fact, simplify down to x. So for the first one, f composed with g of x, that means every time I see an x in f of x, I'm going to replace it with 1 third x plus 4. Um, so the 3 times 1 third x plus 4 minus 4, the 3 and the 1 third cancel. You end up with x plus 4 minus 4, which is, in fact, x. And then the other direction, g composed with f of x, that means every time I see an x in g of x, I'm going to replace it with the entire function 3x minus 4. So you get 1 third times the quantity 3x minus 4 plus 4, so the minus 4 plus 4 cancel, 1 third times 3x, the 1 third and the 3 cancel, and you're left with x again. This is going to be something that we'll talk about in 5.2, these composites that simplify down to x. So now we have a composite function. f composed with g is this function h of x, which is x squared plus 1 quantity squared. And we want to find the two functions f and g that we would compose to get this. So go ahead and try that. So 
I look to see what two different types of things are happening, like if there's one function inside of another, because this thing was going to be equal to f of g of x. So what I noticed is there's like a parenthesis here and then something being done to it. So I said that the inside function is x squared plus 1, and then the outside function is squared. So you end up with g of x to be x squared plus 1 and f of x to be x squared. And then testing it down here, I did the composite and I did in fact get the original function back. So when you compose two functions, you always work from the inside out. Do whatever the inside function says first. Once you've evaluated that, you then plug that into the outside function. If you're just creating a composite function, you plug whatever the inside function is in for every x in the outside function and simplify it as far as you can. For the domain, we find the domain of the inside function and the domain of the final function, and that is the domain of the composite.